Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Drop in the Gloves podcast, or good evening. I don't know, Tim. We get we got listeners all over the world. We got Russian listeners. We got listeners in Australia. We got a big one today. I don't get nervous about many podcasts, Tim. You know that I'm a very just laid back guy. Nobody really intimidates me. This one made me nervous a little bit. This guy had played against many, many times in the Edmonton Oilers system. Came up one of the most. Tim, would you you put a label on like a phenom guy you're excited to see playing in the NHL? Would you put this label on uh, Nail Yakupov? I think phenom's the perfect word for it. I agree. So <laughs> Nail Yakupov was nice enough to join us. He's in Russia right now. Not even going to try to pronounce the city he's in <laughs> because I'm going to butcher it. But he's 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 right in the middle of the regular season. Just started Nail. Thanks for joining us, man. How, how's it going? Thank you guys for why I'm doing well, guys. How you guys doing? I'm doing fantastic. You mentioned before we started taping here, you don't get asked to do many interviews. Why is that? Why? You're you're a number one uh, overall pick? Oh, it was a long time ago. Uh, I, I don't really like that. I don't really like that name anymore. No? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe because I'm playing Russia and uh, the people try to, I think they just forget about me, but I'm, I'm still here, still alive. <laughs> still no, playing. I don't forget about you. You're still a baby. <laughs> He's a baby, Tim. He's not even 30 years old. So almost, thanks. almost in a month. In a month. In a month. Ooh, yeah. It's boy, crazy, that's man. a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. Let's, yeah. We'll get there. Let's, I want to catch up because I'm fascinated with you. I'm fascinated with Russians, how they developed, how they got into hockey, because everybody thinks of, you know, the Canadian dream. You grow up on your backyard, you play hockey, you play baseball, lacrosse in the summer, then you get drafted and it's great. Everybody loves it. I played with many Russians around, you know, my career. We talked about Grigorenko, Zadorov. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you? Were you like a Connor McDavid? Were you like a Patrick Kane, a Sidney Crosby? When you were seven years old, everybody around you was like, Neil Yakupov, you're going to be a number one overall pick. You're going to be a high NHL draft pick. W was that the sense around you in Russia at the time? No, I think it was a different... Uh... Well, basically, when I was young, we never, I never seen an NHL game in my life. And they barely were uh, showing some highlights once a week. And for us, NHL, it was something else. You know, it was like so far away and we weren't even think about it. So we had our league, Russian league, and we were cheering for our hometown uh, players and we love hockey because my city is pretty small and it definitely had nothing else to do here except for hockey. My dad was in hockey. He was coach. And so that's how I started. Uh, and then time flies. I was 12, 13, 14, and I was, I was I was good. But never think about NHL. Never, like nobody told me about NHL. I'm going to play there. And I don't even try to catch that level to be there. So I was just watching the our hometown uh, guys and I want to be there one day and then I moved to Sardinia so I got drafted I had um, I, I met Igor Larionov so he came to my my hometown to see my games uh, in junior and then he invited me to play in OHL he said he had a really good chance to get drafted by a team that I know the owner that I know uh, I think it was Dean Cicerelli yeah really nice guy and for me, it was uh, it was it was different world. I, I didn't know what to expect. I was 16 years old. My parents were nervous, and, but my parents did made the decision. They said, "Like you gotta go, you gotta try, and then we'll see." So I went there, and uh, everything went well. And then when I landed in Canada, since day one, I start knowing what's what's it be like to play in Canada. Hockey, you know, hockey in Canada. It was like completely different world, and and then I I I kind of started to re realize that they have TSN, Sportsnet, and and this and that, media interviews, NHL games, and then when I started playing for Sarnia, I think I was I did a really good job. I put in some points, and then people started talked about it, and then so that's how I uh, realized that. Not dream come true, but I was somewhere that people know me now. Yeah. I have some uh, Jakubov jersey. People 
uh, in RBC Arena and yeah, Arena in Sarnia with uh, families who were buying some uh, Neil Yakupov jersey, and it was kind of weird. I, I was like, like, why? I'm like, why are people are buying my jersey? You know, I'm still young. I'm still a kid. I'm just playing hockey, and then. After like a couple of years, it was draft. It was ranks like where should be first or second or fifth or this and that. It was kind of like uh, all things around just in Canada. But when I was in Russia, I had nothing else uh, to think about. You know, I never think about NHL. It was like for me, it was uh, so too far. in Russia. I'm a little bit older than you. You're 30. I'm 40. Yeah. When I when I think of Russians. I just think of the Russian five. I think of the, the old, you know, Soviet union team, they send them to the army and they have their own team and they're just training Russian training. They're, they're wrestling bears. Like they're, they're doing crazy stuff. Was it like that with you as a kid? Was it all hockey all the time? Or was it just a regular childhood? For me, it was, uh, well, if you, if you talk about Russia, Five and people who play like you know, Igor Larionzi, or Fetisov, and uh, Fyodorov, uh, no, but like the older than me. If you talk about training, their training was it was bad. It was it was it was so tough. They were living in you call Baza. That's where all the team hang out in the one spot, like outside the city. You live there for like eleven months. You haven't seen your family for like, a month. You just train there, and uh, and I think. That's how they escaped, right? I think they escaped from Russia. They yeah. Just moved to, uh, for me, it was it, it wasn't it wasn't like that. So I just uh, I play in my neighborhood. I play hockey, soccer. I do I did everything. I play hockey like I don't know, sixteen hours a day all the time. And for me, it was uh, really really easy to be just a regular child. You know, I went to school. It was hanging out with my friends. You know, I was. I was a good kid for my for my parents, and nothing really crazy was uh, going around. And I don't know if you, if you talk about training camp, I can. I'm not like I don't know what he meant. No, yeah, I was just I was just wondering because when you think of Russia, you just think of it's crazy. It's it's like it's not Canada basically I, and you it's, think of guys man, throwing medicine balls it's, it's, is it like completely different because you mentioned coming yeah. to Sarnia and then you saw yeah. like the difference okay that that we it's different completely different and I I feel really jealous about it and I feel bad about it because um we have so many uh we have so many players and we have so many uh I don't know opportunities we have a guy who has money and, but they don't know how to work with the money, like with the players, with the development, uh, uh, with the team, so with the facilities, with uh, like uh, gyms and this and that training camps, health and this and that. It was, but we have like, we have like some people, they have money, like teams have money, but they don't know how to work with it, you know? And yeah, especially when I, uh, when I play, I live like 80 years in North America and I've seen a lot of good things and I've seen how people play in, in NHL, how they live their lives in NHL, how they get treated in NHL, how they fly, how they recover, how they train. And it was like, it's so, it's so easy to be like a good pro athlete. You know, I'm not saying about to be a superstar. I mean, it's everything in your hands, but you have everything. When I was in Edmonton, man, I had free house. I had free cars. I had free phone. Like Rogers, like or tell us whatever. I I was in my phone. Everything was for free. You know, everything for for players. You got everything. Uh, everyone, uh, re like recognize you outside. You know, and this and that. But here, it's kind of hard. I don't know. We, we you like we're so far away. Even, or, I mean, you, you got to see it, man. You got to see it because. Even it starts from locker room, basically, and then training camps. Uh, the way or some coaches are think they think the game a little bit different. This they, they're still good, but they're not that with the little details. Like you know, you never. I don't know. It just it, it's so it it's. I gotta get used to it. But I love my country. I love to be here, and I kind of I just said okay, whatever. 
if if I need stamina to fix, I'll do it. If I need a trainer, like I'll find a trainer. If I need a chiropractor, I'll find a chiropractor. You know, if I need to train somewhere in the summer, like I'll find I'll find the ice. And, but it's not many options, you know, for players. Do in you Canada, feel in like North America, yeah. When you came back from Edmonton to Russia, do you feel like you have some kind of say in the organization or say? with the coaches, you, you can say those things like, Hey, I, I learned this in Edmonton. You know, I think your first year you were with St. Petersburg after you came, you know, from Colorado, you say, Hey, yeah. we do this, this, and this, maybe we should do this because it works so great. Uh, in St. Petersburg, it's a little bit different story because uh, you probably know who is all that, who owned that team. Mm -hmm. Who owns the know, team? <laughs> his name is Rotenberg. It's really, really a big name in uh, in Russia. Roman Rotenberg. Uh, so, and he's uh, he owns everything. And it, it was hard to say something to him and to change something, you know. Mm -hmm. But but it was really good. In same, I love everything. That's like basically NHL organization, like for me in KHL, one of the best in KHL. They have money. They have the building facilities. Uh, they have everything for uh, for players. You know, I played with Datsuk and Gusev and Shostak and Gavrikov. We had really, really good spot. And that guy uh, had, I don't know how to explain. He, he wasn't coach at that time. He, now he's a coach. But on that time, he wasn't coach. He wasn't really involved, like, in the game. But he did everything for players. We got paid well. We had bonuses, you know. But I can see, like... It could be even more and to be a little bit different and to be a little bit uh, more, more interesting, you know, it was, you know, coaches were different, you know, and uh, um, system was kind of different, but like for me, when I came to St. Pete, I was so excited to come back to Russia. I was like, God, I, I feel like I, I missed that time. And I was, mm -hmm. I really, I really missed and I just enjoyed every day, whatever it was like bad days or good days, or we had like stupid gym or stupid runs, or I just, I was excited to be there basically. And I had no words to say to no one that I want to change something. I was in NHL, we should do this and that, you know, it was kind of uh, like bad start. Like yeah. for me, if I'll do it, you know, it was like, uh, the people didn't like and i didn't want to say anything i had really comfortable to be there but uh now uh i man i can talk about every day but the people like some people they don't listen and that system we had we have it's so like it's so fat you know it's hard to go deep and break it down and change everything from the bottom man it's, it's like it's like a chain it's, it's such a big chain that you have to break down and do something different so like i i'll do everything i could you know i i try i i'm, I'm trying to talk to my coach about a lot of things i didn't teach him how to coach of course i listen to him you know i respect everything the system and this but some things about uh you know travel or meetings you know, some uh, snacks in the locker room, ice, <laughs> you yeah. know, those kind of things I can tell, but I'm, I, I don't go. Yeah. And plus I, I don't want to be like, I'm not a bad guy and I don't want to be like a, a pain in the ass and be like uh, ahead of everyone. No, I just want to enjoy it. I'm you know fascinated. But I, you know, I have a lot of things to say to everyone that I go, but uh, the first thing that bothers me is this Russian training camp. It's, it's called me. It, it kills me. It kills me. Crazy. What's the difference between Russian camp and an NHL camp? It's it just no point. It's it just no. Uh, <laughs> it it's, it's doesn't like some things that doesn't make any sense. In culture, we have we, we don't have enough uh, strength coaches that even close to North American strength coaches that train uh, trains in uh, NHL players or a bicycle camp or whatever camp you go in North America. I've been training with a few guys in uh, North America, the facilities for players. Oh my God, it's crazy. Rehabs and Normatex and shakers and this, and like you, you're not going to find something like this in here. That's funny. 
All right, let's yeah. let's go back to Sarnia when you were drafted because yeah. I want to know. I was never drafted. I was yeah. a free agent signing. What was it like in Sarnia? Because you, you were saying people were wearing your jerseys. That was like yeah. amazing. You're starting to get popular. Yeah. You're playing well, right? You're you're putting up huge numbers in Sarnia. Fantastic yeah. numbers. At what point did you know you had an agent? I would assume. And he's like, "Hey, Igor. you're you're gonna." Yeah. Oh, so it was Larry so At what point yeah. did he say, "Hey, you're gonna go number one"? Uh, I think uh, maybe middle of the season. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember exact, but uh, we were involved. So. Uh, Sarnia is really close to Detroit, so yeah. we were going often to uh Detroit get Red Wing uh, games like in the car, it was like one hour drive. So we were uh hanging out in in the locker room with Lindstrom play, Osgood, I think, played on that time. So we kind of there a little bit. I had no English, I was just like watching with my uh open mouth, you know. And we started meeting some uh, players, and we started meeting some agents, we started meeting some uh, GMs, and we started meeting some scouts. And then after that, so I was just basically I was standing around and I was watching when Igor was talking to uh, his his friends, and and then after that he was kind of translating everything to me that he had been uh, talking to these guys and what they said. You know, he was talking to scouts, they watching you, they like you play and this and that, and then. It was it was coming like that snowball was becoming like bigger and bigger and bigger and then after the summer when I came back for uh, season number two and it was a draft year and first time I saw ranks where I was one and then Grigorenko and it was uh, Murray and it was a lot of a lot of good players I couldn't mm -hmm. even remember but uh, so yeah and and then and 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 and, and, and then it started. And then it started. Ranks were like every month on TSN. Uh, Craig Button, really good guy. I actually <laughs> talked to him. But yeah, I actually called a couple of times, even like without nothing, just like to say, uh, how is he doing? Like, you know, I was live and everything. Like Craig Button was like on my side all the time. So I was number one for Craig Button. And then that's, that's how we started basically. And it was like more pressure and it was commercials, you know. That's how we get in. We get some um, photo shots, and we went. I think uh, I had some. I had some. Man, we we had some. I think cow or we had. So basically, one family in farm in Sarnia. Uh, I think I could remember the whole story, but long story short, I think they talked to Galchenyuk dad. But I live in Galchenyuk, so it was my first year. They said we give you like. 40 kilograms of meat for the whole year, like steaks. <laughs> so, so they basically just like killed someone. They made some beef for us. And they just asked me like, should I like, do we have like a space to keep somewhere? I'll like, I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find the fridge. Don't worry. <laughs> so we got beef. So I'm just saying that how I, how I start to become like more involved in that, like a show, you know, because we had some, a lot of good things were uh, around us. Me and Galchi, we were together. So draft, something for free, you know, free tickets, interviews, Photoshop, this and that, and then and then draft. So walk us a little bit through the interview process leading up to the draft. <laughs> Excuse me. Did you speak with a lot of different yeah. teams? Was it mostly the Oilers? Did you have? Um, did you need a translator present? What was that all like? Uh, it was it was weird. Yeah. So it was uh, the first of all it was uh, combine, right? So we we went to uh, I think we were in Toronto or Buffalo, I can't remember. So we have you you got to do that. I was skinny, can do shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I think <laughs> I think I was good on the time. I'm not sure, but one of the bike I I was really good. I pushed like everything everything I could, and I was I was puking after that. Uh, and then I I went back home. Uh, that's another thing is I miss home so much that I already been in Sarnia for like seven months. I came back for a month and then I went uh, for uh, combine for uh, for a week. And I, I should stay in Canada for another I don't know, two weeks or, or a month. But I went home because I want to go home. Like I I miss that so much. And I, I thought that I don't want to go anywhere. 
like I want to I want to be in Russia but and then we had draft so I have to go on a draft in the, like three weeks so I went there uh, it was a lot of interviews I didn't I didn't I I couldn't say that I talk a lot with Edmonton I talk a lot with Columbus I think I think Columbus was a lot because GM GM uh, was with his friends and scouts at our games and on the playoffs and regular seasons. I've seen him a lot, like often. Uh, I talked to Winnipeg. Winnipeg, I remember a uh, shallow day off. So as soon as I went to the room, he said, well, you're not going to. He said, you're not going to be alive until but we picked 10. So he said, you're probably not going to be alive until yeah. 10. So just. How you doing? I said, okay, everything's good. I'm like, yeah. So and I went out. So my English was my English was okay. Like it was, it was, it was, it was okay. It wasn't good. Uh some teams I think had they had translator because I need to, I need help to say some things uh properly. And some meetings were weird. It was like some tests. I couldn't remember the teams too. Um. Uh, yeah, it was. I just. It was a lot of pressure, kind of. I didn't. I was seven, eighteen years old, and I. I couldn't. I couldn't understand like where I am. Where's that? A lot mm-hmm. of players in the hotel. A lot of media, and I'm still young. Still a kid. I was just like, I want to go home. Yeah, because everybody home. talks about what Brian Burke said. I'm sure you've heard this quote. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a long story short. What he said. I. I couldn't remember it. He said, we, we weren't going to take him. His draft interview was the worst interview I've ever had in my life. Terrible. He was defiant, obnoxious, and sullen. One of our scouts also fought him in the interview, so it was not a good interview. Almost fought him. Boy, actually, actually, I I had some really good uh, meetings with Toronto guys. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember their names, but uh, meetings were with Toronto. It was always with... Uh, big group of guys mm-hmm. and i remember we went to a restaurant once and i think i don't think brian burke was there and i did everything i could to to speak properly and say uh i was good like i wasn't like paying the ass or i wasn't bad guy i didn't say something bad who remember that i i had bad interview with toronto i probably i was scared and i had such a like big pressure on that time and i just want to go home yeah but in my mind was i want to go home maybe uh and my english wasn't good i couldn't i don't have a lot of words like uh english words to to say and to pronounce you know sometimes i had like thought but i i couldn't say it you know uh that's what i could say from my uh, from my opinion that but if i was being uh asshole or uh with the brian burke interviews i I, I think he's wrong. I don't know. Maybe. Do you feel like, and hearing his quote annoys me and Devin Dubik said the same. It's, I was surprised. I just, I was surprised. Does it annoy you? Because they don't say it when you're in the league. They don't say it when you're playing yeah. with them. They wait till you're gone and they go, oh yeah, he, that guy, he was a jerk. He was this and that. We would never have taken him. I think it's a coward way out to talk behind I someone's think, back. I think, I think, I think he is. I think I think it is for sure, like not for sure, but uh, to be honest, I couldn't even remember if I if I saw him there. I I probably I've seen him somewhere, but uh, because when I went to Mastercard that practice ring, right, Mastercard in Toronto. Yep. So I yep. went there one day. I was working with uh, uh, with physio and the strength coaches. They were like checking my body before draft. Yeah, I think everything was fine. I was just like young guy with uh basically had no english i I tried to uh, do everything i could and then i did same thing in edmonton i I went to so if if you go with brian uh, brian bush story i he was i was surprised that that he didn't say anything when i was in the league you know i I was shocked and then he said it like eight years left uh, uh later not eight ten or twelve Let's say was, it's the definition right. of a yeah. coward. You just you, yeah, you can say so, it to his face, but anyways, I don't want to spend yeah. too much time yeah. on that. You get drafted yeah. number one overall, Nail. It's got to be crazy exciting. You're going to the Edmonton Oilers. 
so much potential there. So many good young players. You're building this organization. What was that like? Sarnia is, I, I grew up right down the road from Sarnia and St. Catharines. It's a few hours away. So oh, I really? know Sarnia quite well. Yeah. I yeah. spent a lot of time there. Edmonton's not Sarnia. It, it's all yeah. hockey. It's cold. It's Northern Alberta. Like you said, they loved hockey. Everything is hockey 24 seven. Were you excited to go there? It's a long way from anywhere. What was it like going there and just having all of that pressure, publicity, everybody's watching you? Yeah, I think uh I think I I didn't handle my uh pressure with everything in my head. I think it was number number one point. I couldn't say I was really excited because uh anywhere I go, I was I was down, I was shocked. I was surprised. I was, uh, you know, I was, uh, it was a lot of pressure, man. I just, like, sometimes I just want to cry. I don't know. It was, it was like, you know, I feel like I was young. I was young for that, you know? And I remember my my last two hours in uh, in Pittsburgh, it was a lot of fans. You know, those guys with uh, autographs outside. Yeah, the seekers, yeah. So, yeah, we were yeah, we were walking like a superstar. But I was just want to hang out with my friends that I know, the Russian player, Grigorenko, Makarov, and it was another, like, Russian players. I remember 30 minutes before, I was in a different hotel. <laughs> I was hanging out with, like, random guys plus Russian players in the room having a burger and a pizzas and if we we're talking about draft we're like guys what's going on where are we going do we need this or not and then uh i think mikhail said okay guys we gotta go like we gotta change so i went back <laughs> to my hotel a couple blocks away on my own no taxi with my flip-flops as a young guy you know still young still uh i don't know just 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 the just the young green guy <laughs> And yeah, I went to my room, just take a shower, change, uh, put a suit on, and then I went to the job. I was shaking, and I had no idea where am I going. It was sold out. Uh, everyone screaming. Um, we had valet with. Uh, I went with my agent, with my coach, with my parents, and yeah. And the funny thing is, I think twenty minutes earlier, my agent. I think my agent called me. And he said, like, why did you tweet that? I'm like, I didn't tweet anything. Like, what's going on? So he showed me a page. If someone made fake Neil Yakupov's page in Twitter, and he said, I, I didn't want to go to Edmonton or something like that. <laughs> it was like, it was a big thing, man. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, so GM, uh, I think McT McTavish was a, Tambellini. I know, it was Steve Tamb Tambellini. Tambellini called Igor. He's like, Igor, what's going on? Now? Like, what, what is he doing? He doesn't want to go there. He's like, Steve, just wait, give him a minute. So he talked to me. I said, Igor, like, I had even, I don't think I had a phone on, like, in my pocket. I said, I never tweet that. Like, I, please, please. Crazy. And yeah, and I think first table close to me was Columbus. And that Columbus, GM was staring at me all the time. Like, I don't know, every 10 seconds, every every 20 <laughs> seconds, you know, it was all the time. I'm like, oh, where am I going? <laughs> yeah, but I I, I kind of knew I go to Edmonton. I go the first round. I was kind of I was scared. I was I had a lot of pressure. Uh but in my mind, I knew I'm gonna go one. Kind of, you know, you feel yeah. Better. So um uh, yeah and then i just went there and when i was walking to the stage i've seen those faces at their okay it's a really good guy with his son i met them in edmonton he invited me for dinner before the draft so i was hanging out in his um house so i met them and kevin low and mctavish and those guys so it was kind of really nice meet and warm you know talk conversation at home at the stage after the draft, like, and then I, I met Nuge first time when I put my jersey on, like, uh, 10 minutes later, I, I met Nuge because Nuge was there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and it was, like, 
interviews this and that and and i was trying to keep my uh, smile up that i'm excited but i just i had no idea like where am i going man i just like you know it was, it was so tough for me it was tough i don't know it was i think i i lost that battle really lost my that battle with uh, with my head with my with my mind i i think i wasn't ready for that kind of maybe uh i should I, I don't know i can say everything but maybe if i'll go a little bit like five or ten or whatever yeah. first round maybe it will be a little bit uh the less pressure you know because you don't have that much expectation from uh uh from the city from the organization from the players but it is what it is. What happened? <clears throat> and then, so, so I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, let me ask because you had you had a, I mean, a, a room full of guys, and many of those guys, several of them, Hall and Nuge, were first overall picks right before you. And they kind of been through some of it. Different situations, you know. They're not coming over from Russia, but did they give you any advice? Did they kind of was there anything you could learn from them just being that? And then, second part of the question is, what was your relationship like with the, the head coach Kruger? So, because my English wasn't that good, I didn't really talk to uh, players in the locker room. Uh, I was shy. I think I had English, but I was shy to to talk and hang out with with the guys because uh, when I entered the locker room it was Sean Harkov, Valerie Shamsky, Sam Gagne, and uh, Nuge and Hall and Ebbs, and I was just I was still got a lot of respect for those guys because. A couple months ago, I was watching those players in, in NHL on the TV, mm -hmm. and now I'm with them, you know? So I had to go through this way first that to uh, to stick to that players and be as a part, not like behind them and be with them. And it was hard to uh, for me to get closer to him, you know what I'm saying? So I was kind of, I was, I was shy. I was shy all the time. Uh, and then the time flies. I was kind of, it was better and better. We started right away. It was like short season uh, lockout. And it was, you know, game goes on. It was it was kind of easier. But I, I didn't talk too much. I, I didn't talk too much. I I think I, I was talking to, uh, I tried to talk. I was, uh, you know, I, I tried my best, but I was shy. Yeah. Um, I think I talked to Nick Habibulin, was like a r Russian player. Russian, uh, yeah, he was a goalie for us. I think I was, I start talking to him maybe when it was like ten games left. <laughs> oh no! He was, <laughs> because his 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 daughter is older than me, you know. <laughs> and when he, when uh, first time he picked me up, I was like, oh my god! I I call him Uncle Uncle uh, Uncle Kolya. That's what we called in Russia when. Uh, the guy is more older than you, so you got to call him like Uncle Kola. And okay. then after that, I said, oh, fuck, don't ever say that. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then 10, 10 games left, and Habi tried to uh, bring me over with him, like to the dinners, you know. I was hanging out at his place once, and we were going to lunch. Sometimes he was, oh, I remember Darcy Kardachak. That guy, that guy's a beauty. I think that guy, that guy gave me life, man. That what did he do? What? Me, how though? Was he yeah, just friendly? He were, I was so I um after after draft I went I went to Edmonton for rookie camp and then I think I stayed a little bit uh, longer and he was he was picked me up he, he picked me up every day from the Sutton place uh, the hotel yeah I was driving with him so that's how I started talking a little bit and I I wasn't I wasn't feel shy and I I I kind of. I I get really involved with uh with Darcy and he was he's such a beauty man he he helped me a lot he give me like he drove me everywhere he was buying me some food you know he went he went shopping with me buying me some shoes you know I went with them to uh to buy suits and he was just he he was my kind of like a daddy yeah. on the plane you know and yeah when I had some bad games he's like man you like you scored last last game you didn't score this game what like life is over life is not over like keep working and do this and that like man he was a beauty and then seven years later i met them in nashville at at the club that <laughs> was crazy at the club it's seven years later he was like 
<laughs> we played playoffs. It was I never say that to no like no nobody knows that. But when we when we were in Colorado, we played uh Nashville in the first round. We didn't play, obviously. <laughs> so we didn't play after the game. We just and in Nashville we played always on the weekends. Crazy. <laughs> always and it's the, the weekend. best city, Nashville. Yeah, and then we just went out with uh non playing players and I met Darcy Hardtracks and since like seven years later, That's so awesome. Darcy, that Dar- Darcy, Darcy was really good friend of mine. My uh, my first year, he was uh, yeah, that guy, yeah, he was giving me a life and he helped my my family, you know. And he was smiling. He's just excited about life. Yeah. He just he loved the life. He had some <sighs> fights. He got beaten sometimes. He was winning sometimes, but he was always smiling. No matter what, he was. Yeah, Darcy is a good guy. Nail, I, uh, you you played good that first year. You had, I think, 30, 40 points and 48 games. Yeah, I got 30. A... I, yeah, I think I had 31 points. I, I scored more goals in a team. Yeah, yeah so I, you, you had a successful goals. year. What, was it because you, you think of, you know, your number one overall pick, you're in Edmonton, which is the hockey mecca almost. You know, it's Toronto, it's Montreal. Edmonton's right there. Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messi, those yeah. guys. Did you have fun your first year? Because it sounds like it was, it was kind of not uh, great. So I I forgot about a uh, Ralph Kruger. I I've been yeah. asked about Ralph Kruger. Ralph Kruger was really good, uh, like good human being. You know, yeah. he's uh he's more more than a coach. Like for me, it was important to have uh, someone, uh, who can. Uh, be close to me not just about hockey and about everything like life I uh, he was talking to me a lot and he tried to teach me about like some little things you know I think even when he was mad at me uh, sometimes he, he wasn't saying anything about it but I knew some some mistakes that I've done in the, like during the game a little bit yeah and he was just he tried to he tried to like push me forward with that excitement I had, so to be more successful, that's that's what I think. And with Ralph, I was I was you know I, I was feeling good. He just gave me a good. He gave me a lot of time. You know, he uh, uh, I was involved in power plays all the time, and he he. I, I don't think he wasn't. He was. I don't think he changed like lines all the time. You know, it's I I was I was on my spot. I think. That's where he thinks should I like I should be. I I was there and it was yeah. good. He was he was more than a coach. You know you know we had a lot of good meetings. You know he been uh, in a teams uh, party sometimes with a glass of wine and he was talking to players. He he was on the same level with everyone: players, staff, Joey Moss, uh, the the people who worked for for Rogers Place. He was yeah. he was really really nice guy. So. Uh, yeah, but uh, my first year was okay. Do you know another thing is I I moved I moved with my family there. Okay. So my first year, my first year I lived with uh, basically I lived with my mom, and in Sarnia my second year I lived with my family. So and then I I was when I was in Edmonton I lived with my family for four years. So I felt like. Sometimes maybe I was already like 20, 21, 22, and I feel like I need more space, kind of. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't really say it was pressure. After a bad game, you have an already bad game. You know, you lost. You play like shit, and then you come home and you, and then you have your family. You, you try to be nice, but you, you know, they could say something about your game too. Not my mom, but. I talk to my dad about my game a lot some, sometimes. And I felt like uh, sometimes I just want to like disappear in my room, like in, right. in the space to be by myself. Yeah. I couldn't say, like, I'm not saying it was uh, my my uh, my family did uh, bad, uh, you know, everything to me. No, nothing. But I right now I feel like maybe I need more space to be You're by growing myself. Up. Yeah, I was growing up when I... And I thought maybe if I would stay on my own and took my own way by myself, maybe it would be a little bit different. I don't know because I felt like pressure everywhere. 
it's, that's you know that's what i'm getting from talking to you is just like yeah the amount of pressure and everybody's trying to help but yeah it yeah. sounds and, yeah and they're trying to help you know they try yeah. to help but sometimes you just you just don't want to like be in a space that it, just you just yeah. you like not not even the light and you just want to hang out with your uh, with your mind but i think uh yeah yeah probably probably i should stay by myself but it is what it is well you mentioned ralph krueger being a great guy he got fired after that season they bring in dallas eakins he lasts for one year one and a bit then you have craig mctavish you have nelson you played three years of hockey you've had four coaches I played with Mikhail Grigorenko. You mentioned that. I, I've said this many, many times where I'm like, Griggs was a world-class talent. The yeah. guy had unbelievable hands, score at will. I feel like they ruined his career because they rushed him to the NHL. We had a bunch of coaches like you did in Buffalo. I think we had four or five coaches and GMs and yeah. presidents. Do you feel like that stunted your growth to not have like a consistent coach to just – bounce ideas off and to just talk to and to mold you and help you develop because a coach comes in they don't know anybody all of a sudden you got hall you got nude you got yakupov they, they they try to do too much and you're still an 18 year old kid i don't want to blame your coaches and gm yeah i don't want to say that i, I don't play in nhl because of them and this but i have a couple of coaches that i didn't i didn't like to be honest <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I agree, John. Because when you're changing some people, uh, you know, even even if you're not a hockey player, you just go outside. If you're gonna meet every player, or every every guy, like eight or seven guys a day, you just like it's you're not gonna talk to anyone with uh, with more open heart. You know what I'm saying? So because mm -hmm. the, the people always changing, and you're like you don't know who to trust, kind of uh ralph i was surprised with ralph because i talked to him in the summer he was asking me about russian guy what do you think about this guy i said like he's he's a good guy i know he's uh, my my dad knows his parents and you know my dad knows him when he played junior like i, I was bringing some like information for to ralph he's like yeah i think he's good in this I, we're looking for this guy and like edmonton looking at this guy and this and that and then boom like after couple of weeks he got fired so i called ralph I'm like ralph what's going on he's like i don't know man i was i wake up in switzerland having a good day i was sitting eating lunch with a glass of wine or something like huh. this yeah i got yeah i got called from uh, i think he got called from mcdyish he's saying he's like you got fired sorry <laughs> it was it was long story short yeah and ralph yeah ralph on that time ralph told me that man i i don't know what happened that's what you said, but probably some, they have some like deep things, uh, you know, between like uh, big guys, whatever. I don't want Disagreements to get between but, him and yeah. But yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was, it was happened so quick. And then Dallas Eakins. <laughs> Man, no, it's tough guy, to be, I, it's tough to get developed because I'm just, I'm, I'm looking and then you had Todd McClellan. You, every year you had a new coach. There, yeah, there every was, year, man. I have, I, I have so many coaches. I have so many GMs. Crazy. Oh my god! Un, and you played <laughs> with like I look at the rosters. You you played with McDavid. You played with Hall. You played with Nuge. You had unbelievable players. It, at what time were you just getting frustrated and you just like I just want to go home? This is not what I wanted to do. You have fun in Russia. You you enjoyed going there. You said at the draft, you're like I, I just yeah. want to have a hamburger in the room with some of my buddies, like. It, was there a point where you're just like this sucks? I don't like it. The, I think uh, the big bomb got bomb in uh, second year. I think uh, my second or third game I got healthy scratched against Toronto. So we play home against Winnipeg. I I remember that moment. It was uh, our zone face off. I was. Taking bad lane uh, against Troba because if their face, uh, their sentiment well, wins a face off, Troba just had like one timer. And I was, I wasn't in the lane. I, I don't know. I was cheating or I was scared, whatever. So he, he scored a goal after that. Uh, I got benched. Uh, yeah, and we went to Toronto and I got, and I got healthy scratched. 
and that was like I don't know I I feel like someone just like took something inside nail and just like throws it somewhere I was so empty man it was unbelievable and that was the moment that you should uh try to not uh let those things down you know but I, I was down I was it was it was so bad after that I couldn't um uh, basically I couldn't breathe I was shocked that I lost everything I lost energy I lost uh momentum I was nervous he was he was yeah I just I lost control basically and we talked about it uh with my agent and he said we should probably should ask for trade right away as soon as he said like you got healthy scratch we should like ask for trade. we didn't we didn't do it but uh yeah it was that moment was it, it was bad and since that my relationship with Dallas Eakins was over not because of me he just uh, he just didn't like me. I don't know. Did and... he tell you why? Was it just like, hey, you gotta, you gotta get in the lane. You gotta well, he, play better defense. He, he told me that. He told me, yeah, defense, 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 and this. Uh, uh, he just uh, sometimes he was. <clears throat> I don't want to be wrong, but uh, maybe he was he was screaming at me. You know, he was asking me why you do this, why you're not doing this. But he's not. He wasn't teaching, kind of. Yeah. If if. If uh, if if you know a player is doing something wrong, you gotta you gotta like tell him to. Man, we were in the last place. We didn't make a playoffs. Like he was, I I felt like I had he was just like burned on me. Like only one guy. So and then I was sometimes I was going to press box, uh, press box with uh, assistant coach. We were watching the game from from him. Was writing something on the list. He was like, I was doing some weird things, so, but I never learned like how to play like he basically never teach me and but that guy was just weird i don't know and, does, yeah does taylor hall say anything because he's at that time like he's the leader of the team right i, I think he has the c maybe do, do those guys ever pull you aside and be like hey like nail like it sucks like yeah i, I could remember that one guy said something to me like in the give hand or uh you know like give some support it wasn't like that uh because i think maybe because we were losing and guys were already frustrated because we yeah. were like in a really bad spot for like three years and everyone uh they were kind of in their in their bodies you know and they don't want to do like they don't want to deal with no one they just want to like play the game just go home and whatever we were we we're losing five games win one game and then we we're like fuck everything's good if like city loves it edmonton is like oh guys really good game we won one game <laughs> and then and then we go again for like three or four losing streak and then we, we won one game again and everything is fine man. yeah it was crazy i think uh he was like I know some guys tried hard, but guys, veterans, the Matt Hendricks, he was playing in Washington before that. He was like in the teams who played in players and the fight for spots. And he knows how to win. I think Boyd Gordon was in our team too. That guy eats every every puck on the like on the peaky. He was like, I don't yeah. I don't see any like a, good spots on his body. He always was broken. So he played in Washington, you know, he was saying something that you know, some speeches because he wants to win and they were they were tired of losing all the time. So uh I think somebody uh somebody else was there, like Smith, Ryan Smith. That guy was like uh he was he lost in this uh in uh against Carolina, right? In the Stanley Cup final. Mm -hmm. So that guy trying to say something. But guys, but not a players who didn't make a playoffs and the Guys who never played in the good teams, they don't know how to win. They don't they don't know how like what to do and what to say. That's what I'm saying. And Evs and Halsey and Nuj, on that time they were young too. But I, I think they had really good lives because they were putting like a lot of points. They were living in Canada. You know, they everyone loves them. And and I think they did everything they could on that time. They could not do more because I don't know why, maybe with bad team or bad coach but i think our coach wasn't right and i can tell i uh, 
when I was young, I, I, I say to myself, like, I'm not going to blame coach, but that coach, <clears throat> I, I, I don't like that coach. It may could be you tell, not even. Could yeah. you tell a difference when you went to St. Louis then? Cause you get traded in 16. Yeah. Could you tell different. a difference right away? How, how? Man, it was different right away. It was, the, it was the older team. Uh, you already, uh, throwing some respects for like Vladi Tarasenko. That's the number one guy that I know. Like the first guy who called me and uh, told me about you have traded. I, like text me, shooting me text. And yeah, and when you look at the locker room, uh, Alexander Steen, Schwartz, Petrangelo, those guys, you already know that those guys are, those guys are going to play us all the time. And their question was to not make a playoffs. Their question was like, how far should we go and what we have to do for it and coach like hitchcock the story i first time met hitch it was uh last exhibition games they play against chicago i went to the trainer's room uh to meet the all uh all the staff so hitch was sitting and crashed with popcorn with two hands <laughs> crazy <laughs> he was he was just he was killing it and i was like <laughs> yeah he's, i'm like nail he's like Oh, Neil! <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to the squad. <laughs> it was funny, but yeah, uh, I think everyone was hate Hitch. They hate him. They hate him bad. But <clears throat> I think uh, his system was working sometimes. <laughs> Not sometimes. He the, he's a big name. He yeah. he coached he coached a lot, and uh, I think uh, I gave him some respect. But. Uh, of obviously, of course, it's a different different teams. Edmonton and St. Louis on that time was completely different, and it was it was uh, yeah maybe it was hard to make a team there sometimes, but yeah. They, oh, go, that's a did, oh, go ahead, Tim. Well, can you uh, for the for the listeners explain a little bit like of what that's different, like why different, how. Is it like the everyday? Is it the way you practice? Is it the way you travel? Is it the way the teammates talk well, to each other? No, it's the practice. Uh, no. Uh, in NHL, everything's – John, you know everything is good. Uh, food mm -hmm. and flights and hotels. I think every every team has, like, same things. And, you know, same – same. Uh, uh, how do I say that? Uh the day to day stuff is the same. Yeah, day to day to day stuff. Everything is good. You know, everything's you know nice and nice and clean, uh, skewed and everything. And this, I'm I'm just talking about practice. I'm just talking about like system. I'm just talking about like videos uh, we're doing. Uh, I'm talking about the players when they, uh, you know, agreeing with Hitch when they were like fighting against each other. You know, but some guys were like, some guys were thinking like fucking Hitch. And I was so oh, I was surprised that this, yeah some big guys were, um, uh, uh, they were involved in like a speech fight with uh, with the co with the coach and just like uh, that winning mentality you know um, uh, the way the uh, um, talking on the ice you know the way the uh, uh, fighting for each other i know it's it, you john you know you know what it's like it, it just it's 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 hard to explain you just you just gotta be there it, like if if you were like team who haven't played in players for so long and then you, you go into the team who's gonna fight for like standing cup is is it's just different well it, and first of all i think guy it, it was like older squad in st louis i think uh, i think it was uh that was a more important thing too i think so, in in Edmonton with the young with the young guys, we didn't really do much. I think and maybe that lockout year we almost made a playoffs, but we didn't make playoffs. It is a culture, so. and it starts from the top down. I've said this before, where okay, yeah. if the GM and the coach and the president, <clears throat> and if they treat the players right, practices yeah. go well. Like it, it it starts from the top, and you can tell St. Louis has a good organization. We've had yeah. guys who played for Edmonton. I almost signed at Edmonton many many years, and even the way they talked to the players that they wanted to sign, they were promising me the world. Like, oh, we're going to win the Stanley Cup in four years. Yeah, and they're like, yeah. Well, we'll sign you to a two year deal. I'm like, well, what? Tell me four yeah. years. Like, so it, it's it's very different kind of different organ. I played with Arizona, who was garbage. 
I played yeah. in Buffalo when we were last place and had a dysfunctional president and GM. I played in grade A uh, Chicago and New York. Those were yeah. great organizations, you know. And it's, but then, it's different. Yeah, Edmonton was cool. That organization was unbelievable. They've, they've done everything for players. This, in Canada, I think it's in Canada, it's everywhere like this. If you play in Canada, you're just living your best life, I think. Especially if you're young. Oh, my God. Crazy. <laughs> I wish I could do more when I was young, but I was too shy. I had no English, you know. What happened to you? Because you don't seem shy right now. Oh, man, I'm almost 30. But, you know, the mindset, like, if with my mindset right now, if I'll go back years, it'll be, like, maybe a different story. I mean, I can say whatever I could, but I'm just saying that I'm a little bit different person right now. And... I was different back in NHL was completely different. man. Oh my God. Do you think that if you had this mentality now, what you've learned, there's a song I wish I knew now what I did, what I did back then or something like that. If, if you could go back with all the knowledge you have now, do you think you'd be more successful? Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll say this. I work with uh, Bo Hartley in Avangard. Okay. Um, uh, he said one thing to me. He said, "Like, yeah, nail. Like, if I had you my uh, your first year in Calgary, it will be different story." That's what he said. Man, that mm. guy. So this is the best coach in my life. Probably I've I've uh, I've seen. I've learned. Uh, I don't see anyone close to Bob at yeah. all. That at all. The coaches I've been through Edmonton and St. Louis. Uh, no, I should say, but I'm not going to blame uh, coaches, but I'm saying if, if that guy will be in Canada or in Edmonton, it will be a different story. That guy changed my, uh, he changed my, he didn't change my game. He was just giving some little details about hockey and yeah, we had system. Yeah. We played really poor hockey. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like you want, you just want to puke from our game, you know? When when I'm talking to my friends and my family when they watch our games, like man, we have no idea what you play. I'm like, just 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 play. Like we have system. You have to do this and that. And yeah, you kind of under the box all the time. But man, he teach me so not just me. Like but the players who play for Bob, hundred percent, they're learning something that he will keep continue to do that in different teams. That's mm -hmm. what am I doing right now? Like I. When I was uh, working with Bob, some things I'm I've learned I'm I'm doing it right now, and the, yeah, that guy that guy is different, and it's not it's not surprised that he won every championship he coached. He East Coast, he won AHL, he won AHL, NHL, uh, Switzerland, uh, KHL. We won KHL with yeah. with Bob, and that guy was he just like I, he's a fanatic. This is for him. Just he said, Nail, I love only three things hockey, my grandsons, and uh, Coke Zero. That's it. Doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. We, the funny part is, he we're still talking to each other. He can text me, he can call me. You know, he was FaceTime, FaceTiming me sometimes. He's like, just Nail, how you doing? I'm watching your game. And I was I was thinking, like, are you kidding me? You're watching my game? Like, why do you need to watch my game? You like in North like in Florida, like on the in the house. Yeah. You know, so just cool. enjoying weather. And he, he just he man, he watched every like, you know, every statistic, uh, every team, every player. We had such a big like uh list uh of uh not like numbers, mm -hmm. whatever team you play against, the um, players, statistic numbers, like this and that, what he likes to eat, where he doesn't like to go, like everything. We know everything about player who we're going to play against, like in the playoffs and those kinds of things. It was that so detailed. He, That's cool. He was so detailed. Yeah, that guy was, that guy was unreal. I got okay. some questions for you because I was I was yeah. looking on your at your teams who you've played with and you've played with some some pretty good players. You know, Colorado, you got yeah. McKinnon, Ranton, and Landis yeah. Scog, oh, obviously yeah. McDavid, oh, yeah. Hall, Nuge. Who's the best player you played with in the NHL? Well, uh, 
Well, I'll play with Connor. I think Connor, yeah. he's number one for sure. But I would say uh, Nate McKinnon. But they're, they're both unreal. And they're both putting like a lot of points. Obviously, Connor a little bit more. But uh, but McKinnon, he was like, for me, he was, he was, uh, he was a fighter. He's a warrior, like in the practice. He was first guy on. I I was uh he was he was skating with uh with the goalies all the time like uh 40 minutes earlier. Yeah. He was going on the ice all the time and I was I was with them. And he, he he's not shooting just for shot, he's shooting for score all the time. And so he was working with the goalies uh for 40 minutes and then we have practice and he always when if it's one on one he he wants to beat that guy. If it's two on two, he wants like put him on his ass, like on the ass. He he wants to score. He was fight. He was fighting. He was hitting. And then if something goes wrong, or, or like he you couldn't like beat the guy, uh, or m- most of the time it was Tyson Berry. They go one on one against mm-hmm. each other. And <laughs> if something goes wrong and Nate can score, he's like, I'll "Fuck you up!" Or Man. like, "I'll score next time." Like you know, and he was so honest. He was like he's he, he wasn't funny. So that's how he was taking the game all the time, all, like all the time series. He will tell every player, he will tell coach, Betsy, he'll tell Betsy, like Betsy, we gotta do this. <laughs> we gotta do that. It's not, so you not knew. all the time. Could you tell yeah. Stanley Cup, this guy gets it? Yeah. Like, th- there's yeah, a difference yeah. between him and Hall. Yeah. Um uh, him and Hall. Just the mentality they go about hockey mentality mentality yeah it, it just just mentality the way like for me uh Halsey is a great guy i mean yeah yeah he, he's a good guy i think he was a good player he was skilled too but um but mckinnon is more like he wants to push everything like he doesn't he doesn't want to push everything 100 percent. like he wants to take like 300 percent of every moment you know what i'm saying everywhere and he's he's so serious and uh on that time he wasn't that freak about food and and this and that i've heard some stories when uh and uh russian guys were in colorado like maltev i don't know if you remember that he was he was in the hl maltev mm-hmm. and he said some stories about like how bad he was on the food wise like he eats this and he was he was drinking this and in the practice, he was telling me like, well, you got to be better. Like, you got to do this. Like, don't like uh, lose the puck in the blue. Like, in the practice, he was like mm-hmm. this all the time. He was talking to players all the time. Halsey I was love How were, Halsey, Yeah, Halsey was doing his own things, you know, and he he wasn't really saying some uh, like things to me. I, I was a younger guy. Maybe I want to hear some, you know, speech from guys like uh, Ebbs and Nuge and Halsey. They were just, if I had some like bad moments, I had bad moments when I played with them. They were just going to not choke me or say something. Come on, Yak, like fuck, yeah. fucking, you know, this and that, but nothing like special in the details that she would like do something. You know what I'm saying? So you that used was to that burn was me wide. I know that. So I knew you were yeah, fast. Yeah. So yeah. 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 <laughs> but- so I, I one more. Then Tim's got some. It's, it, this is a long interview. This is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Do you have any aspirations now of coming back to the NHL? You've been in the K for like five years. Have you had anybody reach out and say, "Hey, come back, give it another go"? You're older. You're more mature. No, 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 no. I have. I don't. Well, I I'm I talk to just like uh, Nikita's daughter sometimes. We talking mm-hmm. to each other. I think he's really good uh, friend of mine when we play together. And I don't, I couldn't say I have a lot of friends there. Uh, I have a, I have a friends that outside of hockey, so that I talk to in Edmonton, yeah. really good guys. But to be honest, it's not more about NHL. It's just a, more about like North America uh, life. You know, like for me, hockey, is, hockey is not just, it's not my life. I just I want to live the life too, and I want to like I want to feel that enjoyment. You know, I want to yeah. wake up and feel nice, and 
uh, to be where I want to be. You know, it's not just a, like about hockey. Uh, the Canada and US is really good country to live, and especially for uh, pro athletes, that's really good spot to be because the people and fans and other organizations they get they treating you very well, and they it's, it's fantastic how far they go from from us, from from Russians, yeah. you know, but. Yeah, I just uh, I feel like I'm I'm more comfortable to be here in the, in Russia, you know, be with my friends. You know, I'm still single, I'm still uh, maybe looking for a for a future wife or whatever. And uh, like in for me, like mentality, uh, Russian girl is more closer than like North American girl. You know, um, yeah. But we'll see. Who knows? You know, you know, life is changing pretty quick. But for now. I don't want to go. And I don't think I have a chance. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I'm not putting those uh, points that, okay, next year I got to put like 60, 70 points and go to NHL. Yeah. You know? and yeah. I just I just want to f- feel comfortable and live a good life. Because, be, because sometimes hockey takes like bites so much from your life and yeah. from your, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. It's just I don't want to think about hockey too much. You just like sometimes way too much, and you nervous, and you feel bad. You couldn't sleep because of hockey. You you couldn't sleep because you couldn't score, or you couldn't get an apple, or why? Why? Like why? I don't want. I don't want to do no, that. No, I I don't yeah, think people yeah. realize <laughs> yeah. the the amount of stress, especially for a kid who's eighteen years old you're putting and and it's it's very hard yeah it's hard so, man. It, oh. it's, it's hard but you know maybe for me it was hard for another kid who's 18 years old i don't know tom wilson whatever well i just he think just, it, it shows that you actually cared like you did really yeah. earnestly want to like, yeah i care man well. i was on, on that time i was like those draft years uh, it was like my 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 bad dreams that time was my bad dreams because i couldn't handle i feel so bad when i was lockout year to be honest when it was lockout year so I came back to play for my hometown, Nizhny Kamsk, Nizhny Himik in KHL. Mm-hmm. I played with Martin Tsibak. You remember that guy, Slovakian guy, Martin Tsibak? He won no. Stanley Cup with Tampa Bay in 2004. Okay. So I played with him. Uh, I played here for three months. Man, it was it was my best time I ever had in my life. Why, though? I, I was, I wake up, I was like, I, I love this life. I love this game. I I love this everything. I love everyone outside, in at the ring, on the roads. I love to. I I was I was living my really good life. I was enjoying about hockey. I was like, I was putting some points. Team was doing well, and I played with the man's. My first time I played with the man's. I was eighteen years old, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, it works pretty good. Like, I like it. But I was already drafted. But I knew in my mind, I'm like. One day is going to be over. One day they will say lockout is over and you got to go to NHL. And yeah. I was trying to stretch that moment as far as I could. And then I went to World Championship, uh, World Juniors, World Juniors in the, in, in, uh, in the wintertime. And, it, and, and I, I kind of started, went down because of pressure already from, from that moment. And then in January, they said lockout was over. You have to come back in Edmonton. I was like, that's amazing wow yeah so that was that was that was my uh, best so was it just when you left colorado and you decided i'm done with the nhl i'm going to st petersburg were you was it just like like you were just happy you know what i mean did it feel good to sign that contract with the k i was at at the moment i was still uh, i was still waiting for some uh offers from nhl kind of but it was taking for so long and our training camp starts pretty early. So I had to decide where should I go because St. Peter's where they don't want to wait for so long. Yeah. And I'm like, I was nervous. Yeah. For a week. I'm like, what should I do? What should I do? I got to make a decision. And I felt like it was enough. I, I'm by myself in North America and I don't want to, I don't want that life kind of. You know, it's 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 good to be in a good organization. You know, playing NHL, leading a good life, having good restaurants and in this and that. But I I feel like I need to come back and be in a 
be in Russia, be close to my uh, culture. And, and I was excited. I was, it wasn't, it wasn't too hard. I was, it, it was good times too in St. Petersburg too. Because plus we had really good teams, man. We had a really good team. The Shistork and Gavrikov, Datsuk, those guys. But I'm leaving. It was, it was a really good time. I was, I was really excited. Crazy. I could talk to you all day, but we can't. Tim. Yeah. yeah. So Tim does, yeah. Tim, Tim does a, a rapid fire where he's going to ask you some questions. It's just fun. Yeah. Easy stuff. We've been talking some heavy stuff here, Nail. This is crazy. That's okay. I love it. All right. So Tim, <laughs> I take know it away. Gonna, I didn't blame anyone, but yeah, I try, I try to be honest. No, you. This has been. I usually hate doing oh, interviews you know with oh, Let me tell you, please. Let me let me say something about okay. that that interview interview that Devin Dubnik said about me. Okay. So <laughs> for those of you who don't know. Devin Dubnik, he he was talking to somebody and they mentioned Nail Yakupov and he said, Oh, Nail yeah. Yakupov, this guy was an idiot, a complete yeah. idiot. I tried to explain to him we were doing a low drive from the corner yeah. and he's zipping these things past my ear because he's trying to hit the elbow. And I tried to explain to him, You realize that there's three outcomes here you miss the net, you score, or you hit me in the ear. And I hate all three of those. If you want to <laughs> practice this shot, go do it on the other end. Okay. That's what he said. So uh, it's that's funny because um, to be honest, I couldn't remember that moment at all because I knew I was working with Duby and uh, Habi all the time after practice because yeah. goalie coach always wants to do something extra for the goalies, and my mindset was always to score a goal. Whatever, there was a little hole. I try to like put box here, here, and this and that, and I, I, I knew I hit him probably a couple of times in the head. But I think that moment he was saying it was it was the drill. It was I think it was the drill we were doing. And yeah, maybe I hit him once. He was, he was screaming at me, and then I hit him again. I think, I think second one, maybe I've done it on purpose. Like he was, you, you know, it was a long time ago. And then he skated me with a guitar. I think, yeah, I think you, you, you grabbed your stick like a guitar and tried to smash me or something. Like it was little, little, little fight, kinda. But after that, you know, and we, we were good. Like I couldn't say we were friends. I was. I was trying to be nice to everyone. And it, with Doobie next day, we're like, Doobie, like, we were high by, how are you? you? You know, we were talking. We were hanging out together in the end of the season, like, at the bar. I was, you know, he was, he, him and his wife uh, drive me home. Like, it wasn't like we were hitting each other, you know? You know, the bad things that happen sometimes on the ice when players are hitting each other. But okay, that happened. Whatever, I hit him a couple times, like to his uh, went to his head. But we after that we were good. We were still talking, and I he, I never heard that he was saying something I'm an idiot or like idiot, something like this. He probably knew I'm a young guy, and and I'm, I'm I don't try to do that on purpose and shit. And then I, boom, ten years later, he was saying some things that he but. The, he said it that we're hating each other. That's that's how I understand. Yeah, but it was like he was. I was like, oh my god, crazy. And on my mind was I was I was talking to CCM to order my sticks, and I was like, I knew I'm gonna put on my stick. I'm not gonna put Yakov. I'll put Dubnik ears. <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what I try to put on my sticks. <laughs> And I, I, I was I was ready to uh, answer on Instagram or call them or text them. I was so I was so mad because everyone they keep texting me like, "Yuck, what's going on?" Like I'm like, what, "Like what's wrong?" And then they show me that article about Doom. I'm like, "That's crazy, man!" Like I thought he's a good guy, and we were good to each other. And then he said it. I'm like, "Okay, whatever." It's just how. So, yeah, I'm done. That yeah. sucks. I'm sorry. I and, and I just want to touch on that because I played with some, like I played with the world class, arguably the best goalies ever, um, Henrik Lundqvist. Yeah. You could rip pucks at Lundqvist all day long past his ears. He didn't care. He honestly didn't care. That's, that's the thing about good goals who I've played with. They never like 
uh, Sam Varlama for drawing the very near. Uh, I, because I was with, uh, I try to be more with Nate on the ice with mm -hmm. uh, like a goalie practices. And yeah, he was clean ice. He was cold. Ice was unbelievable. You know, when you're ripping that puck with a white tape on, you know, just started the practice, boom. And I was like, and no word. I was like, Varley, like, sorry, I'm not. He's like, okay, okay, just keep working. That's it. That's that was the difference between goalies yeah. who like trying to hit you with a guitar and goalies who, you know, focusing on these, uh, you know, little things. And obviously, if I'm shooting like three or four times in a row, you probably will kill me. But that never happened. And that was the difference between goalies who with the guitar and goalies who just trying to stop the puck. And actually, yeah. I told him like, okay, that's your job." I was, I was mad too. In the lock, I think in the locker room we started screaming. I say, "This is your freaking job to stop the puck," you know, like that was, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Goalies but, are nut jobs because even like I played with a goalie who was so, he was so annoying. He wouldn't take my shot in a shootout because I wasn't good enough. What? That's and so, so bad. he would, he would that's take all the stars, and then I would go. Barry Brust for the wild that I played with him in Houston for a little bit. Yeah. A nice, nice yeah. guy. I got to the point where I just, I just punched him out. I'm like, you're not going to take my shot. So I ripped the shot at his neck and I just boom, knocked him. I didn't knock him out, but I knocked him down. I yeah. punched him in the head. Well, they don't be a little baby about it. It's just so goalies are weird. Yeah. It's just, you can't do that. You can't do that. I think disrespect. disrespect me. You talk yeah. to Darcy Hordachuk, the tough guys are nice guys, but. Yeah, yeah anyway. that's so beauty, man. You were beauty too. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was. I a... you first time. <laughs> no, I'm not. But thank good. you. All right, Tim's gonna do some questions here. Nail, very fun stuff, off the cuff. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, first question: okay. Who's your celebrity crush? Oh, trying to explain celebrity crush. Oh, that girl that I like. Yeah, or boy. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, what's her name? Uh, I just I couldn't remember the name. Uh, uh, Mary Robin. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Okay. Yeah. What uh, North American food do you miss the most? Uh, I think those uh, tacos with uh, with the meat and cheese is like kind of snack. That Taco that's, Bell. That's Taco. Yeah, not Taco Bell. It's like when you. It's Taco Bell is like wraps, little wraps, right? It's like yeah. Mexican, but that one you you take a chip. And you put in like a, in a cheese salsa? sauce and meat. Kind of, I think it's called salsa. Nachos? nachos, 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 nachos. Yeah, yeah, nachos. Those are good. Nachos. Oh man, Nail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> we don't we, we don't have you. You can find it here, man. You, you can can't find, find nachos. nachos in Russia. You can't find nachos, but you can you cannot find a, a restaurant where they can put all the nachos together and put like a meat sauce on it and cheese and the jalapeno and this and that, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, that's I do. That's okay. too bad. That's yeah. delicious. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Might be my dinner tonight now talking about it. Um, <laughs> who, who are your favorite line mates in the NHL? Oh, uh, well, probably Connor. That's one. And, oh, wait, Derek Roy, 100%. Roisy, Roisy, wow. yeah, there we we brought Roisy from uh, waivers, and we changed Dallas Deacons, and uh, I played with Roisy in the first line, and he made me five million cheat next year. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> but two point five, two point five, two years, so boy, yeah, five million. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Derek Roy. Yeah. Who is the hardest defenseman you ever had to play against? Uh, I think Petrangelo, one of them. Yeah, I think I think Petro, Petro. Yeah, Petrangelo. I, I would say Petrangelo. Favorite vacation spot? Dubai, for now. Dubai. You got water there? Isn't it all sand? Yeah, it's, no, it's good, man. It's good. It's, it's kind of hot. Sometimes you feel like if you go in July, you feel like. Like you just, he's like he's so warm. You feel like a lot of people just pee and you swimming there. So, <laughs> just like your lake in your town. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> better, right. much better. My my last question: We have a lot of young kids that listen to the show. What advice would you give to a young kid who wants to get better at hockey and, and improve his game? 
just don't uh, put too much information to your head. Just do it and enjoy. And like, obviously, you got to work hard, do this, do some shooting and work with the good trainers, you know, good food and sleep and this and that. But don't let people and a lot of thoughts like stick to your brain. Just like make it calm, you know, try and enjoy your life. And uh, remember that hockey is not the first part in like in your spot in your head. You got a, you got a family, you have friends. You have kids. You just uh, you just gotta free your mind. And I think enjoy. It. Don't don't think too much. I think if you let those things that go to your head, it's gonna be hard to uh, to you know to do everything properly and hundred percent. That's what I think. I think if you think too much, things are not gonna work out. Oh, yeah. nail. It, it, that's crazy. Do you wish you would have had that advice when you were 16, 17, 18? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. I, you know, I, I yeah, I try, I try to work with, like, with a physiologist, how, how they call it in English. Psychologist, kind of. Psychologist. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working. I, I just started, basically. I wish I can do it. But it's not like you did a couple sessions and you're done. It, it's, you done. You it's like it's work because yeah. a lot of things will affect you and yeah it's not it's not easy you got to work with uh with your head so bad it's i couldn't say it's like same thing when you're alcoholic or like you have a drug problems but when you have too much thoughts in your head it's i think it's it's not a good thing it's not mm -hmm. a good thing too and yeah sometimes you just couldn't sleep so you just it's crazy you gotta work yeah. And I wish, yeah, I wish some, someone will tell me that. And I work, I try to work in, in NHL with some, with some ladies, but she would tell me something that here and from this side, it was just goes away. So I didn't really pay attention on that. And, but yeah, plus in English, it was hard to me to uh, take everything inside and understand what, what she said and what should I do? So did you ever yeah. get into a fight? No man, yeah no no. I think I had one in O in OHL, but it wasn't fight. I, I almost got killed there from Adam Fox. But now even I could not fight because I broke finger last year, and I had bad surgery, and I have to redo it. Oh, <laughs> so no. I missed like I I missed like four and a half months of hockey. Basically all. Basically whole uh whole season whole season yeah. Can you Russian imagine healthcare? Nail, I, I got healthy scratched for sixty games in a year, so I, I can. <laughs> well, you went to you went to NHL All Star, man. That's, that's I did. Cool. I did. <laughs> that was great. I got that. So I don't know. That's the thing. Would you rather go to one All Star game as a joke, and everybody make fun of you, or be just be the number one overall draft pick, Tim? What would you rather do? I'd take number one. I'd yeah. Take number one. You're yeah. so I, best. Will, I will I will go to uh, All Star game once. And I will, yeah, I will take all the jokes about me, but I think so. it was pretty. I, cool. I don't think. Do you, so when when you went there, like everyone were laughing about you, or like what like what was the story? Like how you feel like how fans were talking to you or players and what the was play, like the players were through. cool. The players were yeah. great. It was everybody else who was making fun of me everybody yeah like, like media TV, media and everybody this. fans yeah. everybody yeah well maybe not the fans, like fans so much the media that's crazy they should do that i think it yeah. was great whatever it that made me good. a ton of money it was fine now i got a podcast so i get to talk to you so whatever yeah man. you know what i mean you live Fair and learn enough. yeah all right, Nail. Well, yeah. listen, thank you. I know you got a game in a couple of days. You scored yesterday. Fantastic. One. Did you guys win? We were up 4 1. We lost 5 4 in overtime. Oh, no. I think this is the first time I I I was up 4 1 and I lost the game. I, I couldn't remember. Even Junior, I couldn't remember the game that I lost from. Just no leadership in that locker room. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, it's so funny all right man well listen thank you very much this was a great talk i really appreciate it good luck this year i'll definitely keep in touch this was fantastic man yeah yeah you guys uh i'm i'm really welcome to talk to you guys thank you for inviting it was it was really exciting thank all you all right nail yakupov everybody check them out what's your instagram uh twitter page they can get a hold of you nailer 1064 it's instagram Nailer 1064. Give him a follow. Send him a nice message. The guys need some good news <laughs> in his life here. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a good one. We'll talk to you uh, later. Cheers.